The Second Opium War began in 1856 for reasons just as petty as the First War. The Chinese had still not allowed the British to enter the city of Canton. They allowed them to trade outside the city walls, because of a disagreement over the translated language in the Treaty of Nanking. Despite protests, the Chinese held firm on this and the inconvenience and indignity rankled the British. On October 8, 1856 Chinese police boarded an improperly registered British boat Arrow that did not have the required British flag flying, and took 12 Chinese citizens into custody, including three well-known pirates that the British merchant had hired. The British contacted France, Russia, and the United States about forming an alliance. The British official complained that the Chinese were not allowed to board a British boat but, seeing an opportunity to push the thorny issue of foreigners being banned from entering the city of Canton, the British officer demanded a written apology. When the Chinese refused, British gunboats opened fire on Canton starting the Second Opium War. The real reason for the British reopening the war was that they wanted to force a more favorable revision of the Treaty of Nanking, and this time the French and Japanese piled on. The aid of Commodore Josiah Tatnall, whose ships violated U.S. neutrality to assist the British, when asked why he intervened, Tatnall replied that blood is thicker than water. Just as in the First Opium War, European military technology proved too much for the Chinese. The British quickly destroyed the Chinese fleet at Canton and took the city. Some Chinese generals thought that they could beat the combined British and French forces if they lured them inland away from their indomitable gunboats. But European forces crushed the Chinese forts and inland armies with superior firepower and moved to Peking. Europeans had cavalry, disciplined professional soldiers, and the new breech loading Enfield rifles. In contrast, the Chinese used cavalry armed with bows and arrows. In one major battle there were 35 European casualties to 1,500 Chinese. When the British and French forces arrived in Peking, they looted and destroyed the most precious royal treasure. The Summer Palace was an amazing 80 square miles of meticulously planned park, buildings, and artistic treasures, including gold, silver, jade, silk, and ancient royal robes and thrones. The French and British troops plundered it all. After the looting, the European armies burned down the Summer Palace. New treaties forced China to open up to more free trade and Christian missionaries.